This is episode number 239 of the Middle Country Public Library podcast. Hello and welcome. Sal DiVincenzo here in the studio with my fabulous, wonderful colleague, Sarah Fate. Hey. Okay. Nicole Rambo. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good. So, I think you should do a rhyme. A rhyme? So it's like podcast episode 239 because we fine. <laughs> okay. But it has to change every single time. Oh, you just re- you, she just rhymed again. Time nine, fine. Hey, look at me. Look at you. Watch out, you. Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put that in my to-do okay. list, Sarah. So next time, <laughs> two forty. You gotta start thinking oh, now. I gotta start thinking now. Yes. <laughs> oh lordy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use that one. <laughs> uh, so this week we're doing mm-hmm. something special. I uh, I've invited Mr. Jimmy Ward to come back mm, to do Civil War. Civil War to do his uh, this week in history for this week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, in history. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and it's just a funny story. So he comes to me at, like he'll he'll pick a bunch of dates and uh-huh. he'll come and say, you know, what do you think? Uh-huh. And I literally had to like take the red pen out, and, like no Gettysburg here, no Civil War there. He's like, what? I'm like, no, we're not talking about civil war. There's yeah, been other yeah. wars. I know exactly. I, he's gonna pick other wars. Okay. Okay. Maybe he'll pick some other war. Okay. <laughs> Why yeah. does it have to be war? So much has happened. Why doesn't he do? It will be celebratory history. It is. It is. Okay. You'll, Invention you'll... of exactly. Uh, you know something good. Yes. Yeah. So the w- cannon. The cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yes. would be. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, once again, uh, it's my great pleasure to present uh, This Week in History with mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Jimmy Ward. Once again, we have Mr. Jim Ward in the studio. How are we doing? All right. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you. You know why you're here, Jimmy. Oh, I know. It's This, this Week in History. history. Oh. Crazy, Woo! all right. <laughs> uh, we just lost a bunch of listeners. No, I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, it's always a pleasure having you here, Jim. Nice to be here. And uh, so for this week, which uh, Labor Day just happened a few days ago, and, yes. and now we're um, in the week of, we'll say September what? September 5th? So I think we're saying September 4th. September through, 4th through, through the 10th. The 10th. Fantastic. Yes. All right, so- Jump right in there, Jimmy. What you got for us this week? So September 4th, 1609, this is kind of important being this close to uh, Manhattan. Yes. The island of Manhattan was discovered by navigator Henry Hudson. Wow. Imagine that. Okay. That's what, geez, 413 years ago. Something years ago, yeah. yeah. So without him there, who knows if we would have found... uh, Exactly. Who knows? This could have been Manhattan here. Yeah. <laughs> Center each. Um, then on the 5th of 1666, the Great Fire of London ends, leaving 13,200 houses destroyed and eight dead. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Um, considering when it happened and how many houses were destroyed and only eight people died. That's, that's pretty, actually pretty good. It's pretty phenomenal. I mean, it's not good that, uh, in the sense, you know, but well, I'm just saying. Yeah, like, yeah. But it's, of, uh, that's a good number a good, for, for... For how many homes. But all right. those people were out of their, their homes, though. Yeah, exactly. So Then uh, there's a big one for American history. These are all big, Jimmy. They're all big. They're all big. <laughs> uh, and I promise there's no civil war. Yes. Well, we were very specific with you, Jim. Yes. We said. And I, I have delivered, I promise. Okay. I have delivered. All right. Um, <laughs> so, so September 5th, 1774, yes. the First Continental Congress was assembled in Philadelphia mm. with 56 delegates representing every colony except Georgia. And then that included Patrick Henry, George Washington, Sam Adams, wow. and John Hancock. All the heavy hitters. All the heavy hitters. All the big. All the big <laughs> all the, guys. All the big you know? guys are there. <laughs> um, the reason they were formed was because so the previous December you had had uh, the Boston Tea Party, yes, and um, so the uh, British they imposed these things called the uh, Coercive Acts, also known as the Intolerable Acts. Okay, which basically because of the disobedience mm-hmm. of Americans, Britain wanted to make them pay. So you had the Boston Port Act, which closed the port of Boston until damages from the Boston Tea Party were, were paid. Oh, I didn't, had no idea about yeah, that. Yeah, that, isn't that something? The Massachusetts Government Act, which res, which restricted Massachusetts from having democratic town meetings and turned the governor's council into an appointed body. Holy macaroni. That's, the, that's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't be happy either if no. I were the colonists. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Administration of Justice Act, which made British officials immune to criminal prosecution in, in Massachusetts. So they could just get away with anything. Anything. They were British. Whatever they wanted. Wow. Yeah. And then the Quartering Act, which required colonists to house and quarter British troops on demand, including in their private homes as a last resort. You know, when you think about this and then what came later with our own constitution, mm-hmm. the Fifth Amendment, which uh, which mentions— You can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah. So, you can't force people to right. hold, hold uh, or, or without the, um, the homeowners. The homeowners' consent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that So you had those things going on. But this actually it unified the colonists to to kind of like fight back, and yeah. they were basically orchestrating a united resistance to British rule in America. That it's was a, something yeah, it's, very big yeah. for what happened at that time. Exactly. And then you had the Second Continental Congress that started the next May in uh, seventeen seventy five, and they were the ones that eventually voted on and passed the Declaration of Independence. Okay. So, so this was the, the seed that this they were This was the, the seed that was planted, and then it grew into the Declaration. Awesome. Yep. Cool. And it happened this week. Yeah. In history. In history. <laughs> In history. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, actually, a very sad uh, moment in history, September 5th and 6th, 1972, um, this is when 11 members of the Israeli Olympic team were killed during an attack on the Olympic Village oh, yeah. by members of the Black September faction of the pa- Palestinian Liberation Army. Israeli jets then bombed Palestinian positions in Lebanon and Syria in retaliation on September 8th of that year. Oh, I didn't realize that happened in September. Yeah. I always thought it was so they were the Olympic team, right? Yeah, yeah. So what, what, I guess they were doing trials or something like that, or were the Olympics I feel like late it, that year? I thought, right? I thought it was the, because it was the Olympic Village. The Olympic Village, yeah. yeah. so they must have, maybe they had it later that That's possible. That year, possible, I don't know. Because it's usually in August, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like middle of August. Yeah, exactly. For a couple, like two, three weeks yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, right. uh, Another, I'm sorry to keep putting yeah, sad ones on. Yeah, thanks for us down here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the next one is uh, September 6th, 1901. Um, that's when President William McKinley was shot by Leon Chogos. Um, he's an, he was an anarchist, and th- this occurred while uh, McKinley was visiting the Pan American Expo- Exposition in Buffalo, New York. Um, Did this happen at a train station? No, he was actually in a receiving line. A receiving line. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then he came up with the gun in his coat and and shot McKinley. Wow. But um, and this was before there was really any security or anything with that. Probably, right? yeah, because I know. Well, they were actually his like personal secretary and and others were like urging him to cancel this part of okay. the trip because they were worried about an Something assassin. Happening. Oh wow! Um, you know, September fifth, I believe it was. He gave a speech. There was a big fireworks display with a burst of pyrotechnics that spelled out "Welcome, President McKinley, wow. Chief of our Nation and our Empire." Wow, they did that in the sky? In the sky. I, I don't believe that. Uh, I'll find a picture <laughs> if I can. I'll see. <laughs> we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. A picture of that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, this Buffalo Pan American Exposition uh, boasted everything from a nine-ton elephant to a 389-foot electric tower powered by the nearby Niagara Falls. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is um, all occurring after McKinley guided this, the United States through to victory in the Spanish-American War. Uh, he was actually a very popular second-term president, and then this happened. Yeah. And then who comes in as a result of that? Do, we, do you know? Was it uh, Lincoln? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt, yep. yeah. I was way off. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he, uh, so imagine, it's, it's weird to think about what could have happened, what would have happened if McKinley stayed in office. Because yeah. you never know what, how would the the following administrations look, what would they have looked like, look like and yeah. who would have been the president it's at wild. those times. It's those weird things in history that change yeah. the course of, of that country or that, you know, state's history or exactly. something. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but this, uh, this Leon Cho, Chose go. I, I'm having trouble pronouncing that one. No worries. It's uh, it's spelled C Z O L G O S Z, but it's pronounced Chogos. Okay. He was a 28 year old, shy and brooding, a former steel worker. Uh, he was an avowed uh, anarchist. He said he pulled the trigger out of a desire to contribute to the anarchist cause. 
saying, I don't believe in the Republican form of government, and I don't believe we should have any rulers. It is right to kill them. Wow. Isn't that sick? Sick. And he claimed that he stalked McKinley across Buffalo for two days and nearly shot him during his arrival wow. at the train station. Okay, maybe that's why. Which, uh, I, I, which was the day before. Yeah, I feel and I, I feel like I read the story where something happened at the train station where he was he was about to do it, but something. But you're on the right track though yeah. with the train station thing. Yeah. that might have been is that Garfield, maybe. Yeah, someone. Maybe was, it was Garfield that was at a train, train station. Train station, and, and 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 it was foiled somehow. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I think that might have been Garfield, if I'm not okay. mistaken. But um, he said I I killed President McKinley because I done my duty. Oh, and what date was that again? That was September sixth, uh, nineteen oh one, and wow. then Teddy Roosevelt, who um, he wasn't initially uh, going to come back to Washington. Because it, it seemed that McKinley was on the mend, mm-hmm. and then he ended up passing, and, and he right away made his way to Washington and became, uh, I guess he was the 26th president. So he was the vice president at the time. Correct, okay. yeah. So so that is that. But the next one I have a feeling you're going to very much enjoy. Okay. Um, September 8th, 1966, Star Trek premieres on NBC TV, go. starring William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. Awesome! And you're a big Star, Star I Trek. I am a fan? big Star Trek fan. We're uh, what is it? It's the 56th anniversary today. Yeah, 56th. amazing. Yeah, isn't that crazy when yeah, you think yeah. about it? That's yeah. nuts. It's crazy. I, I honestly, I've never watched a Star Trek episode. Oh, you shouldn't say that on the I, air. <laughs> I, I used to. I used to watch the new, the Next Generation when I was okay. younger. All right, because well, that was the one that, that was, was on. Your, that was when, your generation's Star Trek. Exactly. Right? I enjoyed it. Yeah. D- data or data. data or, yeah, yep. Yeah. Sure. I remember all those guys. <laughs> Oh, but I, this is the original wasn't, crew. Wasn't Whoopi Goldberg in that? Whoopi too? Goldberg oh, was Guinan. Yes. Wow. That that is. Yeah. That's so. And there were so many people in that. There's so many people in that, and 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 you know the the story behind uh, the original Star Trek is it it didn't do very well in the ratings, and it was probably the first time the fan base actually brought a show back. Oh wow. Yeah, and was very uh, interesting, passionate about it. And so. they made movies of that too. Of course. Wow. Yes, they made a number of movies. So they made it they even made though the original movie. series wasn't as popular. They still made yeah, they made wow. movies. Yeah. All right. Yeah, then. in the late 70s it was Star Trek the Motion Picture, The Wrath of Khan, sure, which is probably one of the best of the original movies, Search for Spock, Voyage Home. He's a Star Trek f- <laughs> a fan, friends. You can tell. <laughs> so that was uh, September eighth, nineteen sixty six. Amazing. Um, September eighth, nineteen seventy four. A month after resigning the presidency in disgrace as a result of the Watergate scandal, Richard Nixon was granted a full pardon by President Ger- Gerald R. Ford for all offenses committed while in office. Wow. So that you know whether you agree with that or not, that's a pretty. Uh, old move yeah. to do something if, if you're so, looking for yeah, re-election in exactly. a couple of years too. So but. You know where Nixon made that speech where he says, I'm not a crook? Disney's Contemporary Resort. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't. Wow. Yeah. It all comes back to it Disney. It all comes back to Disney. Disney's they involved own everything. with everything. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Mickey Mouse pressing the buttons somewhere he's, in a he's big room. He's controlling everything. Yes. <laughs> Pay no attention to the mouse behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we have in 1986... The Oprah Winfrey Show is first broadcast oh, wow. nationally, isn't that? I wow. didn't realize it was it was that uh, that early. And I thought it was later in the eighties, yes. to be honest. Um, September 9th, nineteen oh eight, Orville Wright makes the first one hour airplane flight from Fort Myer, Virginia. Wow, the first one, one hour, hour. F- one hour. That was yes. it. That was a big deal yeah. back then. And you know? and you think about that 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 was from nineteen oh three was when the. Um, uh, what was the original one? The Wright Flyer. Yes. The original Wright Flyer they tested in Kitty Hawk. Yes, and, and it went the length of a 747. Is that what it yeah, was? Approximately, yes. The <laughs> length, that's all it did. It that's all it did, but it still it, did. it still had flight, though. It but... still had flight, and now this one was an hour. Yeah, so and, it took uh, five years to get it to go at least an hour. To an hour. And then look where we are today. Exactly. Hustle and bustle. And, and he didn't even and... have to connect through Atlanta. He nope. just went straight through. <laughs> he said, I'm just going. There was no other air traffic <laughs> that he had exactly. to worry about. So. There's no worries. Yeah. <laughs> His bag was right there when yeah. he got off the plane. He's like, this is easy. It's wonderful. Wait, wait till the <laughs> 1960s or something. Yeah, yeah. 1970s. <laughs> um, so then in September, on September 9th, 1956, Elvis Presley appears on the Ed Sullivan show for the first time. Oh. So that, that's pretty, uh, pretty wild. I think uh, this, I think this event that you're talking about 
I may be mistaken, but I think this is the one where they shot him from the from the waist up because they were oh. concerned about his gyrations, oh. let's yes. just say. Yes. He had a lot of those. <laughs> he had a lot of gyrations. A lot of yes. gyrations. But, it's just uh, amazing how in the 50, 60 years since that has happened, yeah. uh, you know, turn on the VMAs, the MTV oh, Awards, yeah. and the gyrations happening there. Are... You're, getting, you're getting much worse than, <laughs> worse uh, than, than what Elvis, was, Elvis uh, was doing. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have on September 10th of 1776, George Washington asks for a spy volunteer. Nathan Hale volunteers. Uh, um, and we remember Nathan Hale as being the spy that was caught by the British and uh, hanged actually in Huntington, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and his final final quote was or final words were, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. And, one. and then you think about what came after that. We had the Culper spy ring, which I think we might have touched on another time. A while ago. Um, yeah. But that was the one that took place in Setauket, and yeah. they were sending the messages across the Sound to then take it to George Washington. So a this, lot this of, was the beginning of A lot of, of history of that. that happened here on Long Island oh, that yeah. people don't realize. People yeah. don't realize. you no. got to go explore. Exactly. Explore. <laughs> um, and then the final one I have is September 10th, 1918. Uh, the Boston Red Sox and Chicago Cubs players threatened to boycott the World Series, unless they are guaranteed $2,500 to the winners and $1,000 each for the losers. Wow. Never, they're professional ball players. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're getting paid, I'm sure. Yeah, but at that time, $2,500 at that time. That was a lot of money. Yeah. That was a ton of money. Yeah, that was a lot of money at the time. A yeah, thousand but, a person? But the, then, you, then the next year, you had that. Uh, Black Sox trot yes. uh, the Black Sox series That's where right. they threw the World Series. Yeah, and we'll put so. we'll put uh, the link to your history bites in the show notes. Yes. That's right. I, I made history that last month. So yes. tell us tell us about History Bites since you're here. Uh, history Bites is um, <laughs> supposed to be a bite. Sometimes I make it a larger bite than it yes. should be. Sometimes but, it's um, a three-course meal. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically a little uh, video series that I have on our YouTube page, and I, I choose a topic. I usually do it, uh, post them on the first and the fourth Tuesday of the month on our YouTube page, and then we post it on social media. And, uh, you know, we I, I try to get different topics that aren't even – ones that I personally would be interested in. But, sure. And I ask actually some other people, you've done one on Disney, I you know, so Disney, yes. I, I try to spread it out a little bit if, if it's a topic that someone's in, you know, enjoy that yeah. they enjoy. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's a fun series. You know, we, we uh, put a little music to it and stuff, it's try good. to liven it up it's and, good uh, stuff. but it's a fun time. I love making yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Great. And well, again, well, in the show notes, I'll put a link to the playlist so Sounds people good. can take a look at it. Thank you. Uh, it's all wonderful things that you do here, uh, Jimmy, having to do with uh, history and whatnot. Oh, I thank you. Uh, and, uh, you know, folks who are listening might not know, uh, Jimmy's done a, a number of uh, reenactments. Here. I have. I have. I've, I was Abraham library. Lincoln a couple times. Lincoln, uh, Walter Cronkite. Cronkite. Ulysses S. Grant. Yes. Um, I think you it? did uh, Kennedy. Right? Oh, I, oh no, no, no! I was FDR. FDR. That's right. I did right. the 75th anniversary of um, Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so it's always fun. And you get into the part. You grow the beard. You oh do yeah. The thing. Yeah. You and get actually, the wig. next <laughs> year, 160th of the Gettysburg Address. Oh, so you're I'll, bringing Gettysburg back? I'll be. I'll be bringing that back next November and sometime in November. I'm not sure when, wow. but great, it'll, it'll a be great. Uh, great shock. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> aghast that I'm doing Lincoln. You're actually doing it, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jim, for coming down for another episode of This, this Week in History. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, thanks. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Okay, that does it for This Week and This Week in History. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you want to listen to older episodes, listen to older This Weeks in History, mm -hmm. you can go to the website. You know that. What's the website, uh, Nicole? Do you remember? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, mcplpodcast.com. Uh, okay. There you can actually interact with us. We have a chat feature. Or if you're watching on YouTube and you hit the subscribe button, please. Mm -hmm. You hit the like button, please. Mm -hmm. Do that. Uh, and you can comment below and let us know if we're doing this right. Because mm. if we're not, I don't know if we're going to change, but at least we know that we're. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you think? <laughs> Give us your suggestions that we yes. won't. Uh, uh, we'll, yes, yes, we'll try. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, thank you for listening. For Sarah Fady, Nicole Rambo, I'm Sal DiMincenzo. We'll see you on the next show.